you will know. Troubled heart, you'll know. Every life has meaning, for I made it so. And oh, oh, you will know. Troubled heart, you know. Problems have solutions. Trust and I will show. Oh, oh, you will know. Lonely heart, you know that every life has reason, and for I made it. So, oh, you know. Good morning, good afternoon, family. Welcome to this place I call the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Okay, I'm going to try to touch on this a little bit and hope that y'all can feel my heart. And hope I don't ruffle too many feathers um, with this truth. But I have to say what's in my heart. Okay? And there's just a lot of uncertainty and a lot of instability going on on the planet right now. And you know why? Because this is the dawning of the age, I keep saying it, of Aquarius. This is time for everything to be shook up. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter lies with Mars and then peace will guide the planet and love will fill the stars. See, we ain't at that part yet. Okay, but everything is being shook up because it's the dawning of the age of information and the days of crap and lies and all that stuff is being exposed, right? Okay, so I think that we all can probably agree on that. But what I really wanted to talk about is all of the um, hoopla that's going on around Kanye West and his endorsements being taken away. Not to say whether I feel any way other than I have to be honest and truthful with the way I feel because I've been around for a while, okay? And the first thing that, you know, I don't, I'm not upset with the Jewish community. In, my, in fact, I admire them. I admire them. I often tell the story because I lived in a neighborhood, a full of neighborhood, a full of Jewish people. I often tell the story about um, with my friends, and my certainly this story comes from one of my friends who lived in a predominantly Jewish area. You know how they put the little box out in their um, front of their houses, and they go in there for a certain amount of time. I mean, they we we really saw the culture, and I'll never forget that there was somebody on the block that had done something that was not in favor of what most of the uh, uh, Jewish people on the block thought was appropriate. And so when him and his wife, and I often told this story, when oftentimes when, when his, him and his wife came off the porch to come and talk to another Jewish couple that was over there, the two couples turned their backs. I ain't never seen nothing like it. But I understood. And when they, and simultaneously they turned their backs on the guy, that, the, the couple that was coming up to talk to them, 
letting them know we don't want to hear what you got to say. You have been ostracized because whatever you have done was egregious enough for us to let you know that we're going to draw the line in the sand right here. And I've always admired that about them people. I've always thought that's the way you show somebody not to mess with me, not to mess with us, not to break code and to stay true to what you know to do. You don't deviate from it. You don't pussyfoot around it. And this is what it looks like. It looks like us turning our back on you for a protracted period of time, uh, whatever that was. But right now, we ain't messing with you. And you know what the little couple did? They turned their little asses around and they went right back across the street where they came from. And I told my buddy, I was like, wow, you see that? He was like, yeah, yeah. That's the way it goes when you ostracize somebody. And that's as it should be. I'm not sitting up here saying what Kanye West said was wrong about certain people in the Jewish community. They have B'nai B'rith. They got all types of interests of groups that are vested in, in their um, well-being. And when you go against the grain, like Nick Cannon learned, they will come after you and they are relentless in their approach and in their attack on you. Okay? We should have so much unity. As much as we've been through together, through slavery, through Jim Crow, and I think the only difference is, is because the Jewish people never lost their language, they never lost their religion, they never lost their mores. So it's easier for them to stick than it is with black people. And every time I think about us, I think about Willie Lynch when he said in that speech, don't worry about them because they're going to be perpetually miserable. Look at them. They don't even know how to ostracize their own when they talk bad about them. They don't even know how to tell their own to sit down, get out the way. Right now, we're not talking to you because you're an embarrassment and you are trying to downgrade us. You are low grading us. You are disrespecting us. You are disrespecting your mama, your grandmama, your dad. All of that. And for that, we're not speaking to you. We don't have that in the black community. You see, now everybody wants to cry for Kanye after he sit there and said all that disparaging stuff about black people. Okay? And so the first people that's out to defend him are black people. And the first thing I say is, how stupid can we be? Now this is my opinion. I'm speaking for myself. How stupid can we be? Here's somebody crapping all over you, making fun of you, doing worse than a dominant a society that enslaved you, talking about you, and like you're crazy, the same way the dominant society does, and now you got uh, nothing but, uh, well, you know, Kanye West is a genius, and you know, Kanye, Kanye West ain't no more different than nobody else. He's a good musician. And as a musician, I grew up with a lot of great musicians, so for me, he ain't no big deal. Okay, because y'all buy his records. I know plenty of musicians out there that's really great. You ain't buying their records. Just like you know a lot of ball players, and any professional ball player will tell you, oh no, I wasn't the best one on my block. Okay? Look at all these basketball players that you know when you look at the New York playground. Most of them were selling drugs, but they were also good basketball players. And they was making so much money selling drugs or doing whatever they was doing, they didn't want to be bothered with the NBA in this construct. But that don't mean that they're the best basketball players in the world because it was somebody on the playground better than them. And that's what I say about Kanye West. Y'all might think he's the best thing in the world, but that does not give him a right to go and crap on his own people. And anytime somebody craps on their own people, they should be done just like the Jewish couple did when they turned their back on the betrayer and let them know that what you say, you are not welcome here. Not until you repent. And that's how I feel about Kanye West. 
You are not welcome here till you repent to black people and then not just by your words, by your deeds. And until you're able to do that, I really don't got no, no feeling one way or the other because all the stuff you talking, you if you would have read The Secret Relationships Between Blacks and Jews by Louis Farrakhan, you, you already know where we stand and what the position is. This book was helped done with Jewish scholars, Jewish imams, Jewish. This, this book was written by the, the, the scholars. Okay? The NOI research group couldn't do this without the help of um, the, the, the people that helped them. They couldn't have done it without the great uh, uh, Jewish leaders and Jewish, um, what you call them, imams that helped. Okay? And so you have to understand, I don't want to use this as, um, you know, somebody say I don't want to be misconstrued as abusing the knowledge you know, and I just want to view it as an opportunity to develop a more equitable relationship between the families of God. Okay? And the thing I would hope that black people would get out of this is learn how to stick up for yourself. Learn how to unite for yourself. You don't have to cover for Kanye West. Kanye West, didn't, two weeks ago, he wasn't thinking about covering for you. He said, white lives matter and your black ass life don't. That's what he said two weeks ago. Okay? At least that's the way he presented it. Now, now, and I can only go by what the way he presents it. And until he shows and does different, that's what it is. And that's what it is for me. So with that being said, I don't have no hatred in my heart for nobody. Okay? I may have a difference of opinion about Israel and Palestine, okay? And I and I have a right to my opinion, okay? And that could be a discrepancy that a lot of Jewish people are very sensitive about, just like we should be very sensitive about reparations and what this country owes us for all the damage that it has done to us. And our generation after generation after generation. And we should be just as sensitive of that as the Jewish people are about their birthright. So I'm not mad at the Jewish people at all. But I am ostracizing Kanye West. Not because he told a lie or anything of that nature. I, that's not what I'm saying. When you give information, it shouldn't be hurtful. And you shouldn't be trying to hurt people. And that's exactly what Kanye did. And he hurt a lot of people in the interim. And I don't see nobody being punctified like black people. Ready to stick up for him after he done took a stick and stuck it straight up your behind. And put you over a marsh uh, on a marshmallow roast. Think about it. Think about it. That's what you need to do. So, whoever it hit, it hit. Whoever it missed, it missed. But with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe to the channel. And let's have some dialogue. I welcome it. See you in the next video.